For those who don't know, Alien Isolation is a survival horror game released in 2014 by Creative Assembly as a spin-off to the original 1979 Alien movie directed by Ridley Scott. Now, Creative Assembly were actually given access to exclusive art and props from the original movie to aid with the authentic look and feel. One of the artists on the team, John McKellen, said that they had the rule if the props couldn't have been made in 1979 with the things they had lying around, then they wouldn't make it either. So let's take a look at the trailer and analyse how they recreated the atmosphere that made the film so iconic. So straight away we've got the old 20th century Fox ident or logo as you might know it. It's got this VHS style film grain over the top. Those that are more used to the 1979 original Ridley Scott Aliens will certainly recognise that. It's got an overexposed film burn feel to it. So again harking back to older formats pre-digital. And even the scratch fade between clips is indicative of this. Then we go across to a more 80s style, computerized, digital feel. But it does still have an analog element. And we're back to that kind of old logo reminiscent of the Sega Mega Drive. Again, for those that remember. Now we're not going to focus much on sound, but the sound is again a homage back to the 1979 original. That low drone gives you this isolated space feeling. It's exceptional. I don't know if you can hear me, but I made it across. Then we're introduced to a voiceover from a female, a homage to the original with Ripley being the main star. Visually, we've got these swinging lights. Moving lights are a really good aspect to have in horror genres. They can distort shadows and make for an uncomfortable feeling. We've also got a few powerful lights in the scene, but lots and lots of shadows, especially around the edges. It gives it a high contrast feel, and again, makes it fairly uncomfortable. It's really bad here, Verlaine. We then cut to a scene which is tricky to make out, but we can see it's kind of a med bay. We've got flickering lights, very dark, and that's a recurring theme, this sort of flickering lights or moving lights. They're high powered, but very directional, so we get lots of shadows. I think, I think there's something here. Atmospheric fog can be really useful as well. Again, it's designed to distort things, make things hard to see, and that kind of sensual deprivation is a very uncomfortable feeling. Not quite being able to see what's around the corner or through the fog can be quite scary. The music builds and we see our first shot of the alien. What's really important here is that it's only on screen for a very brief moment. Actually seeing the thing that's causing the horror is often less scary than our imagination of it. So you'll notice throughout the trailer that the time we see the alien is fairly limited. And that's one of the main differences between the film and the game. For the sake of gameplay, we actually need to see the enemy so we can kind of run away from it or hide. Whereas in the film, you'll see much less of the alien. Again, it's all about the imagination. We see just quick glimpses of it, flickering lights, that show off the form and the silhouettes. And once again, that leaves more to the imagination and makes it more scary. I love the shot through the corridors. Having lights coming through these kind of strips gives these really interesting shadows. Again, it's really high contrast. We've got so many shadows in there. It's hard to see what's going on and it's quite disorientating. This artistic use of shadows is known as chiaroscuro, a term well worth looking up and delving into if you want to really master the art of lighting. Lots of flickering lights, lots of distorted images looking through vents or small gaps, corridors that are quite narrow so we can't see around the corners. This is all fear inducing. Now this is the first time we start to see the gameplay and we've got the motion detector and this is something the audience will enjoy seeing. They'll know that the game is sticking to the original film in terms of aesthetics, but also essential for the actual gameplay. So it's important that we see those aspects. 
Here's another quick shot of the alien worth breaking down. We've got a side light. It's quite a powerful light, so we can see a lot of sharp highlights, but there's a huge amount of shadow. And that's so we can just see small elements of the alien. It's kind of glistening in the light, and we can see all the tiny little teeth, and it's almost got an evil smile expression. But again, a huge amount of darkness within the shot, and those snippets of light reveal the silhouette and form of the alien. And that slight bit of movement of the alien is all important because we focus in on it. <laughs> Now we're seeing a few clips of what makes up the gameplay, the elements, the noise maker, it attracts the alien, and that's essential to give the viewer an idea of what they're going to have to do in the game and how they play it. And it really creates an air of excitement around the game, but also mystery because we're not fully told what these things do, we just get a general idea. We see the flamethrower here, pretty much the only weapon I think they had in the original film, and not particularly effective. It's a great one visually though, fire, atmospherics, they're always really exciting to watch and compelling parts that you want to put in any trailer. So right at the end here is where we actually see the alien. In some ways, if this was a film, they wouldn't have wanted to show this for so long. But we need to see the alien for the sake of the gameplay. It's also become so iconic. This is H.R. Geiger's art that's gone into this. So everybody kind of knows what the alien looks like and the audience will be expecting and wanting to see it. There's also an aspect, this is 2014 remember, and these graphics are pretty advanced. So they really will want to be showing them off. And this does give a full indication of what the game's going to feel like, how you're going to be confronted with this alien. It's pretty horrific so you can certainly see why they kept it in. We've of course got the hand waving in front of the camera, so it's very much a point of view shot. We become that person holding the camera. And again, the lighting isn't giving everything away. It's low key lighting, so we've got lots of shadows, there's lots of darkness, and because the alien is quite a shiny creature, you get lots of highlights across the beast, giving that silhouette an outline. That combined with the movement makes us focus on it, and it's really fear inducing. I love how they ended with the explosion and then the absence of sound really focuses you in on the title which slowly builds, taking us back to that 80s font and 80s feel. All in all, just an incredible trailer and an incredible game.